Are you here to find out how to freeze your Georgia property taxes? Then you're in the right place. One of the most important things I learned 12 years ago as a property owner was to learn how to freeze property taxes three years at a time. When I learned how to freeze property taxes three years at a time, I didn't have to worry about property tax increases each and every year. As I make this video in May of 2022, tax appeal season is well underway for many Georgia counties. Thousands of tax assessment notices have already gone out with many more thousands yet to come. I'm releasing this video now because I think it's absolutely important that Georgia property owners get this information, especially with property values surging in value. As most people know, property values have surged upwards since 2020. As I make this video in May of 2022, property values are still climbing. But just because property values continue to climb year after year doesn't mean that your property taxes have to increase year after year if you're a property owner in Georgia. What most property owners in Georgia don't know is that you can actually freeze your property taxes three years at a time. The basis of how to freeze your property taxes three years at a time is going through the Georgia tax appeal process. It's more than just simply filing a tax appeal form. You have to follow a certain path through the Georgia tax appeal process. It's not hard to get the three-year tax appeal, but there are certain steps and certain details you have to pay attention to in order to get it. I've made several videos on how to file a Georgia tax appeal, and I will include a link in the description below to that playlist. Most people, when they file their tax appeal, they generally are only focused on that one single year. But when I file Georgia tax appeals, I am focused on getting the three-year property tax freeze. It's something I recommend, and I will explain why. Every year, Georgia property owners receive annual assessment notices on their property. These assessment notices are supposed to be based on values as of January 1 of that tax year. Because I'm making this video in 2022, I'm going to be using tax year 2022 as my example here. A disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, appraiser, or representative for any tax assessor's office. This video should not be considered official legal, financial, or professional advice. If you need official legal, financial, or professional advice, you should hire a professional to discuss your situation. I am only providing general information based on my personal research, experiences, and opinions. Contact your local tax assessor's office for official, county-specific information. What's supposed to happen in order to establish property values for January 1, 2022, is that they use sales comps from 2021. Essentially, sales comps in 2022 have no place in establishing the value as of January 1, 2022. And I want to make sure people understand this, because if you don't understand this distinction, you're paying more property taxes than you should be. It's been my experience that the tax assessor's office often place too high a value to properties that are currently being lived in and occupied by tenants. This is important to understand because most sales comps that I see are based on sales of properties that have been cleaned up, fixed up, and made retail ready. Whereas those properties that are lived in or occupied by tenants, those properties are nowhere near retail ready. One of the points I'm trying to make is that when you file a tax appeal in 2022, you're effectively trying to lock down the property values from 2021. You should be looking at sales comps in 2021 when you follow your tax appeal in 2022. I can't emphasize enough that property owners will pay a high price if they even postpone this for one calendar year. If you choose not to file a tax appeal in 2022 to lock down the 2021 tax values, then you're going to have to reassess in 2023 to try to lock down the values set in 2022. As far as I'm concerned, the property values in 2022 will be substantially higher than the property values in 2021. So the sooner you file your Georgia property tax appeal, the greater the benefit of your three-year property tax freeze. As I said earlier, when I file tax appeals in Georgia, I always do it with a three-year tax freeze in mind. I think you should too. 
If you go into any tax assessor's office and ask about the three-year tax freeze, I suspect you're not going to get very many clear answers. I suspect that they're not going to give you details and they're going to give you vague answers. Part of it is that some of the staff may not be aware of the entire tax appeal process. And the other part of it is that they're not really encouraging citizens to do this. It's not really in their best interest. As far as I'm concerned, as a taxpayer, the more I'm educated, the better off I will be. And that's the spirit of which this video is being made. To educate you as a property owner so that you don't have to pay any more property taxes than you should. I am happy to say that I have a roadmap for you if you want to follow it. This is what I do every three years for every property that I'm involved with or assist other people with to get my three-year property tax freeze. There is one caveat. There are 159 different counties in Georgia. My direct experience has been through four different counties. And because there are 159 counties, the details may vary somewhat from county to county. So be on the lookout for that. The big picture should still be the same. The first step in order to get your three-year property tax freeze is that you have to start the tax appeal process. You start the process by filling out the tax appeal form and submitting it to the tax assessor's office. The details of doing this is covered in another one of my videos. Again, I will have a link in the description below. When you file your tax appeal form, one of the things that you're going to have to do is to establish what you think the value of the property is. One of the most important things to remember is that the properties that you are appealing on, unless you've just moved into the property, you've probably lived in the property a number of years or your tenants have been occupying the property for a number of years. That means there are imperfections in the property, it is not retail ready, and there are flaws and imperfections in the property. These are all things that work in your favor if you're trying to reduce property taxes. The reason why is that if your property value is lower, you pay lower property taxes. But when you get ready to go sell a property, you then make it retail ready. But in the interim, while you're owning the property and occupying the property, the property value is not at retail value. But just understand that the value that you put on your tax appeal form will likely be substantially less than what is shown on the annual assessment notice. Although there is not a specific formula that I follow, if I have to write down a value of what my property is worth for a tax appeal, I will tend to put the lower number than the higher number. The worst that can happen is that the tax assessor's office will disagree with you. After you fill out and sign the tax appeal form, you will submit it to the tax assessor's office. Once you submit it, you can expect a written response within 30 to 60 days. If you are concerned and unsure, you should call the tax assessor's office to make sure that they have the correct address and that a notice didn't get lost in the mail. This written response you will receive is very important and will determine what you will do next. You will either get a no change letter, which means the tax assessor's office disagrees with the value that you put on your form and that they're sticking with their value, or they're going to mail you a revised assessment notice, which is lower than the initial value that they had set for your property. If you get a no change letter, it's very simple. Your tax appeal case will be forwarded to the BOE, the Board of Equalization. Generally, the BOE falls under the Superior Court of that county, and they will schedule an appointment for a BOE hearing for your tax appeal case. If you get a revised assessment notice with a lower value, regardless of whether you agree or disagree, if you want your three-year property tax freeze, you will have to continue your tax appeal case. I know it sounds strange, and I've asked about it many times over the years. Procedurally speaking, there is no way around it. Whether you agree or disagree with the revised assessment notice, you must continue the tax appeal 
in order for you to get your three year property tax freeze. I can't state that emphatically enough, but I have good news. It's actually quite easy to continue the tax appeal case. All you have to do is write a short note and send it in to the tax assessor's office. You have to submit your letter to continue your tax appeal case within 30 days of when they printed the revised assessment notice. Again, I will provide a link in the description below so that you can learn how to continue your tax appeal case. When you submit your letter to the tax assessor's office to continue your tax appeal case, they will then forward your case to the BOE to schedule a BOE hearing. Now at this point, whether you got a no change letter or a revised assessment notice, all roads lead to the BOE hearing. But the good news is this, you may not have to attend the BOE hearing. It's often a formality. What is likely to happen with many Georgia counties is that they're going to reach out to you and offer a settlement. If you're filing a tax appeal just to secure a three-year property tax freeze, you're going to want to agree to this. Once you've signed a settlement agreement with the tax assessor's office, you've effectively won your three-year property tax freeze for that property. But if you want to fight a little bit harder, that's up to you. But the point is, as far as getting a three-year property tax freeze, if you agree to the value that the tax assessor's office presents to you, you sign the settlement form and get it back to their office. They get it signed and approved by the board, and then you get your copy, and then you're done. Keep in mind that this is the best case scenario. And this is what I've been accustomed to for the last dozen years. However, last year, I ran into one county that was forcing all property owners into the BOE hearing. It was something I was prepared for because I was warned about it. So the worst case scenario in trying to get your three-year property tax freeze is that you will have to attend a BOE hearing. It's more of an inconvenience than it's difficult. Now, I understand that the BOE hearing, the way they schedule appointments, are not very convenient. You don't get a lot of say. They send you an appointment, you get one opportunity to make a change, and that's it. However, the good news is if you simply want to secure the three-year property tax freeze, you don't have to be the one that makes the appearance at the BOE hearing. You can have a friend or family member appear on your behalf or you can hire someone to attend on your behalf. Regardless of who you appoint to go to the BOE hearing on your behalf, all you need to do is write a short note and send it in to the tax assessor's office as well as to the BOE office to let them know who is going to show up on that BOE hearing date on your behalf. When that BOE hearing date arrives and whoever shows up on your behalf all you need to do really is to sit quietly and maybe answer a couple of questions. Honestly, it's very easy. Whoever shows up, if they show up and say that they are here at the BOE hearing simply for the three-year property tax freeze, they understand what you're doing. And what will happen is that they will still go through the formalities of a BOE hearing, but you will find that the hearing will go very quickly. Last year, I attended a BOE hearing with a property owner, and we had 18 to 20 tax appeals to get through. And you know what? Because we knew why we were there, we were very efficient about it. We were there for the three-year property tax appeal freeze, and so that the hearings for each of the 18 to 20 properties went by very quickly. In fact, that entire day was scheduled for the both of us. But although it was scheduled for all day, it only took an hour and a half. Needless to say, everyone was quite happy with the outcome. The BOE hearing officers were happy to get done early. The representative for the tax assessor's office was happy that it ended early. And the property owner and I were happy that we were done early. They got to go home early that day and we were able to get our three-year property tax freeze. Up until recently, I've never had to appear at any BOE hearing, but it's not really that bad. 
you sit through the formality, the presentation, and at the end, you are given a form signed by the BOE hearing committee as to what their determination of what the property value should be. And that property value is in effect for three tax years, unless you decide to appeal it upwards further. I've only appealed one case because I didn't like the outcome of the BOE hearing, but that's a story for another time. As a reminder, if you happen to go to the BOE hearing, make sure you get a copy of what is signed. Sometimes you may get a copy right on the spot, other times you may have a copy mailed to you. If you're a Georgia property owner and you want to get your three-year property tax freeze, I recommend checking out this playlist of videos that I made regarding how to file Georgia tax appeals. While you're at it, do me a favor, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you will receive notifications when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.